When I was little, I loved monster movies. Not Dracula, not Frankenstein per se. I like my monsters a little bigger. Not Power Rangers, I'm talking old school. I grew up on Godzilla, Mothra, Gamera, who gave me a fondness for turtles I have to this day. They usually went the same way. Big monster appears and stomps the shit out of some poor HO scale town, sending people running for their tiny little lives. Then heroic monsters appeared. Ultraman, Voltron, Goldar, Spectraman, all aliens, mind you. The monsters started fighting each other, which usually just doubled the damage they do, but still ensured victory. But what if there was no Ultraman, no guardian alien from outer space? We'd have to take things into our own hands and build our own monsters. And what if Guillermo del Toro directed? I have a hard time saying Guillermo. Guillermo. This is Pacific Rim. In 2020, Jaegers are giant robots used to battle kaiju, giant monsters that rise out of the sea. Jaegers are like regular robots, but they're much larger, take two people to drive, and taste a lot like NyQuil. The Jaeger, Gypsy Danger, which I think they named after a stripper, is piloted by the Beckett brothers, Raleigh, played by Charlie Hunman, and Yancey, played by Diego Klatanoff. During a fight with the kaiju, we're introduced to the combat of this movie. The pilots are linked to the robot via a process called drifting and have to work together to drive this thing. Too much robot for one person. It seems to work pretty well and it's a novel concept. But brother Yancey is killed and a traumatized Raleigh quits the Jaeger program. It's five years later and the government decided instead of Jaegers to build a wall. Another goddamn wall? This is Marshal Stacker Pentecost, and that is a name and a half, who's in charge of the last remaining four Jaegers. He needs Raleigh back. We need you. No, I like construction. Aw, oh, come on. Oh, okay. Meet Makomori, played by Rinko Kikuchi. Dear Rinko Kikuchi, I apologize if I have mispronounced your name. Sometimes my tongue just won't cooperate. Just ask Adele Dezim. Damn it. And she's drift compatible. I don't know why I tried to make that sound sexy. Meet our comic relief and kaiju experts, Newt and Gottlieb, played by Charlie Day and Bern Gorman, respectively. The kaiju enter through a portal in the ocean, every week or so, but lately they've been coming a lot more often. Giggity! Raleigh and his new co-pilot, Mako, try out their new Jaeger, a rebuilt gypsy danger. Turns out childhood trauma can still wreak havoc on the present when Mako's memories almost trigger a workplace accident. What is the beginning? Much like how pilots drift with Jaegers, Newt thinks he can drift with a kaiju brain to learn more about them. I was going to make an O-face joke here, but I really didn't want to picture Charlie Day ejaculating. Damn it! Newton, what have you done? Ew, spewage everywhere. The first wave, that was just the hounds to take out the vermin. Us! The second wave, that is the exterminators. And they will finish the job. Newton, I need you to do it again. I need more information. I, I mean, not unless you have a fresh kaiju brain lying around. What do you want? I'm looking for Hannibal Chow. I was told he was here. Newt meets with black market kaiju corpse dealer Hannibal Chow to obtain a fresh kaiju brain to drift with. Did any part of that sentence make any sense? When Jaeger pilots drift, it's a two-way street. Right. A bridge, right? Course, it yes. sets up a connection. Both ways! But doing so also attracts a kaiju to him. Now two kaiju appear, and they're looking for the little guy. Three Jaegers are sent in, but Gypsy is left out. Two are destroyed, and a third one is disabled with a kaiju EMP weapon. Not bad for a bunch of monsters. Time for our heroes to save the day in their analog Jaeger. All right, Mako. Get ready, this is for real. And this fight is badass. The creatures, the robots, they all have a sense of weight and scale to them. It plays a lot like a fist fight for most of the time. Both combatants just throwing punches and blows like Godzilla meets Rocky. I'd watch that. I think this guy's dead, but let's check for a pulse. First one goes down and gets double tapped. Finally, somebody does that. Glock, glock, biatch. The remaining kaiju puts up a huge fight despite being smacked upside the head with a boat. All aboard, motherfucker. 
Oh shit, they got wings? But before they get dropped like a tough nut, Gypsy has one more weapon. Sword deployment. Sorry, it takes a second of foreplay before- There we go! That was cool. We win! Oh, fuck off, Gravity. And they find out something surprising about the kaiju. It's pregnant. You killed a pregnant creature. How do you sleep at night? Aw, I liked him. With only two Jaegers left, the plan is to drop a nuclear weapon into the breach to seal it. Even Pentecost joins the fun when one of the pilots is too injured to drive. Today we are canceling the apocalypse! But, but if I already bought a ticket to the apocalypse, will I get my money back? You ready for this? <laughs> are you okay? Thus begins a tough battle above the breach with two Jaegers and three Kaiju, including the biggest one yet. But they lose their bomb in a last ditch effort to kill the smaller creatures, but Gypsy kills the big one. Luckily, Gypsy is equipped with a nuclear reactor that they plan to use instead. A last second escape, and the Gypsy detonates, sealing the breach. Yeah, Raleigh and Mako escape to the surface. Don't worry, he's fine. I, I can't tell, are they, are they making out? They might be making out, I can't tell. The breach is destroyed, along with all the Jaegers. But is this really the end? I'm guessing no. That was Pacific Rim. And I gotta say, the design of the robots and the design of the kaiju are pretty imaginative. Even though the robots are anthropomorphic, they're expected to have that shape, but their designs are so varied, they're real easy to tell apart. And the kaiju are especially creative. Raleigh's journey from traumatized soldier to hero is pretty standard. Having mentally felt his brother's death really did a number on him. So when he gets back in the saddle, he's facing a lot more demons than we could ever know. Mako lost her entire family to Kaiju, so her axe to grind is bigger. And her journey from terrified little girl to victorious warrior is honestly a bit more satisfying. Charlie Day is hilarious as usual. Don't ever change, babe. There's a rivalry set up between Raleigh and some of the other Jaeger pilots. It starts with animosity and ends with mad respect. Conflict for the sake of conflict. Hannibal Chow is a real hoot. And Ron Perlman is always fun to watch. What breaks down to attacking really big animals is kept interesting by having such a huge over-the-top scale. The effects are amazing and still look pretty awesome on Blu-ray. The destruction is believable, although purposefully sanitized. You don't see dozens of people being crushed or killed by debris, but they do establish that there are bunkers that citizens hide out in. Casualties are mainly depicted when it affects the main characters directly as plot devices. It keeps the tone fun and relatively light. Charlie Hunman is a bit on the cliché side, the reluctant hero who saves the day, and the story still has other clichés, but the clichés fit this kind of movie, and in a way it depends on them. You don't need to think too much when you're watching giant monsters smack each other. It's well paced, and the running time never really feels drawn out or padded. There are three main set pieces, and four if you count the flashback, but they're so huge they make everything else not a monster fight feel relatively subdued. It's hard to follow this with this. Pacific Rim is a three and a half out of five. The story is part Godzilla, part disaster movie, part Top Gun, with a little Robotech thrown in. Somewhat predictable, some cliches here and there, but the presentation is fresh enough to overlook most of the flaws. The cinematography just blows me away. The effects hold up and they don't shy away from daytime scenes and Del Toro isn't afraid to hold shots for a while, giving the audience time to soak it all in. Sometimes scenes are a little cluttered and chaotic, but that also adds to the scale. The movie is huge, literally bigger than life, and a lot of fun. I'm actually looking forward to the sequel. If you like this video, give a thumbs up and subscribe. Or not, no pressure. This is The Newbie, and as always, thanks for watching.